Hello, this is Jeff of Tal Flader Mouse. Today we're going to discuss some of the technical details of the ARM Gatekeeper, a controlled expanding slug. And we'll also talk about the Gatekeeper Black, a modification of the original Gatekeeper. And as a bonus, we'll also discuss the controversial tire test shots. According to the boxes, the original Gatekeeper weighs in at 460 grains. The Gatekeeper Black is slightly heavier at 465 grains. The original Gatekeeper has a velocity of 1270 feet per second. The Gatekeeper Black, 1130, which is 140 feet per second slower. The Gatekeeper Black also delivers 330 fewer foot-pounds of energy. The Gatekeeper Black uses a 31 caliber, 32 grain hardened steel ball bearing at the very bottom of the cavity. And that is held in place with a wax-like material. Now according to my scale, the original Gatekeeper weighs in at just over 27 grams, just under one ounce, or 421 grains. And when we add the steel ball to it, it comes up to 453 grams. 0.7 grains. Now we understand why there was such a variation between the velocities and foot-pounds of energy because you're probably not going to see much difference with only five grains. So in other words, I think they just simply got the weights of the slugs wrong on the boxes. I'm just nitpicking here, but I wanted to understand why there was such a difference in some of the specs. This is what the shell looks like. It's loaded into a clear two and three quarter inch hole. Every single one I've seen is nicely done, very professional. And this is what the slug itself looks like. It's kind of a non-discarding Sabo. All the plastic is some kind of proprietary component. It has a very, very deep gas seal cup. That of course has the potential to hold a whole lot of powder. And when the slug expands, you can see how that plastic sleeve is rolled back instead of just kind of torn away. And I think that's kind of impressive. The copper slug has a lug machine onto it, and that is embedded into the plastic wad. It's a very strong bond, and you never have to worry about the slug separating from the wad like we've seen with other wad systems. Now the shell uses between 26 and 27 grains of the powder on the left. Now it looks very similar to Hodgson's long shot, but the grain size is just a little bit smaller. And long shot is just too slow of a burning powder for a slug of this weight. What I thought was kind of unusual is the use of two fiber wads between the slug and the powder. Now it seems apparent they really wanted to get the nose of the slug flush with the roll crimp, but it was also necessary because the um, volume of power was not enough to fully fill the bottom of the case of the, of the shell, and you'd have a huge air gap in there and you'd never get proper ignition. And it's worth mentioning that you could do the same thing by using a just a really thin nitro card on top of the powder if you needed the room in the shell. And we have tested that and it does work. Now in regards to the Gatekeeper Black with the 31 caliber, 32 grain steel ball at the bottom of the cavity and the wax holding it in there, the general idea was to give the Gatekeeper kind of an armor piercing capability. In my opinion, the biggest problem is you just don't have the velocity there. At only 1130 feet per second, it's probably not gonna do much armor penetration. The Gatekeeper Blacks did expand normally despite that modification. Now one unintended consequence of the modification was that it threw off the balance of the slug so we saw some pretty wild oscillations and the slugs often did not hit squarely. In my opinion the original gatekeepers are perfect so don't mess with them. And now the controversial tire test story. On the way out to test the gatekeepers with Greg I ran across four of these tires right across the street from our city dump. Now the people that dumped it off probably thought, oh, that's close enough, plus I don't have to pay that huge fee to the dump to just drop off these four tires. Now if you're poor, 20 bucks, well that's like four gallons of gas or you know, a meal at McDonald's or whatever, so guess where the tires go? They go on the side of the road. So now we have lots of tires and uh, refrigerators and washing machines and mattresses on the side of the road because Going to the dump has become a luxury. 
The city's solution to this problem was to hire a crew of people to drive around in expensive trucks and pick up all the junk that people dumped on the side of the road. Each of these employees is probably paid fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, probably more than that, and it is a full-time job picking up all this stuff that people couldn't afford to dump. The irony is, if they just made going to the dump free for residents of that city, it would actually cost taxpayers less money. We already pay huge fees just for trash to the city, so if they really wanted to solve the problem of illegal dumping along the sides of the roads, there's definitely a smarter way of going about it than spending half a million, a million, who knows how much they spend having city employees picking up the trash along the side of the roads. End of rant. <laughs> okay, so I picked up one of these tires uh, because I didn't have room for all four of them. And they st all still had air in them. And they still had a little bit of tread left. And I'm not sure why they dumped them. But I decided to make a really good target for the gatekeepers. So using the tire was kind of a last minute idea. Looking at the nose of the gatekeeper, we can see it has a very large hollow point, but also a nice big cutting surface. And then Greg said he had some regular foster slugs and he thought it would be an interesting idea to compare the two different projectiles against the sidewall of this tire. So we first shot the gatekeeper black at the tire and you could see how uh, wobbly that sucker was, but it, it was still pretty accurate. And the gatekeeper black did a really nice job of putting a nice big hole and deflating that tire, leaving about a half inch diameter hole. And this is what the backside or the exit wound of the tire looks like. We then shot it with the lead foster slug. And this is where the big controversy, or at least people thought the test was not fair because the tire was already deflated, right? Now the foster slug would also uh, cause rapid deflation of the tire, but the hole was a bit smaller and the entry hole is a little bit different looking. You can see that the, uh, the hole itself is about 5 sixteenths of an inch and you can see where the round nose of the slug kind of squeezed through. But for some viewers, they were very adamant that the difference was caused not by the shape of the slug, but because the first test, it had air in the tire. So we shot it a third time using the classic gatekeeper. Notice how steady it is flying. Like the foster slug test, the tire was not pressurized, so in theory, the damage should look exactly like the foster slug, right? Not like the first one where it was pressurized. But the whole diameter was exactly the same as the first shot. And because the slug was flying nice and straight, the exit hole was also very uniform. So surprise, compressed air does not really slow down a projectile very much, if at all. Now to be fair, the third shot was mostly to see how stable it would fly, and we didn't show the footage of the aftermath of that. And it let people's imagination fill in the blanks. Hey, thanks for watching.